You're listening to Mad Men Sports. Bi-week edition. To my left, we have the one and only, Zach. To How's my, it going? To my right, we have Diamond Dave. You want to talk about one and only? There's only one Diamond Dave. Copyright. What's up, Dave? How are you? Oh, you know me, Jake. Every day I'm hustling. Every day? I mean, yeah. You kicked that Clar- Claritin habit? I did. It'll be kicking up against him. Finally, that lasted longer than Zay Jones this season. Holy shit. Zay Jones jumped right in there. Gone. We're wait, just really going to jump into it, we, huh? Wait, what are we trading for? Fifth round pick. Bag of peanuts. A fifth round pick in two drafts from now. To who? It's about it's what it's worth. To the Oakland Raiders. Who oh, else are we going to draft? Oh, God. The Raiders are a mess, aren't they? Yeah. Besides Josh Jacobs, that, that's all they got. You guys could have Josh Jacobs on your fantasy teams. For what? No fantasy. And we can talk about that this week because it's the bye week. This is the week where we get to relax a little bit, kick back. You know what? Shout out to the Bills. And that's not any different than normal in this podcast. Shout out to the Bills. But shout out to this Bills team that gave us content in a week where there was almost none. They traded Zay Jones this week and brought back Sonoris Perry. Number 32. Which who cares other than the fact that Number 32 will officially be resurrected and play special teams. OJ Simpson's love child's back on the team. Is that a bad resurrection joke? I'm sorry. No, I love it. Pay my respects. R.I.P. But, yeah, let's talk about Zay Jones for a little bit. Now, Jake, we had the whole heartfelt, the heartfelt message about two weeks ago. On top of that, you're also a huge Zay Jones fan. So, yeah, uh, well, give me some feedback. Let's talk about that. I was a huge Zay Jones fan. <laughs> Up until maybe week two. And then, I mean, after the Giants game, just kind of fell off. Uh, I was really excited about him last year. I really thought he was coming into his own. I, I had a jersey. Uh, well, I still, still do, I guess. Not for long. But uh, it's just really disappointing to see a second-round draft pick not pan out. But I do think that speaks to Sean McDermott and Brandon Bean, uh, that if you are not performing, they're not worried about shipping you out no matter what they have invested in you so everybody else is on notice absolutely and you know what you gotta commend it right dave not a big fan of gloating but i i kind of called uh zay jones out earlier in the year and so did i he uh i was just trying to get the best out of him and it did not work we did not get it i can't believe we got anything for him yeah i'm honestly surprised that he was worth a fifth round pick I was starting to get worried that he was worth nothing, which yeah, in our eyes he was. You look at him around the league, Cooper was going for a first. Cooper's pretty good talent. Stephon Diggs is rumored to be going for a first. AJ Green's rumored to be asking for a first. Uh, I have first. I'll take both those guys for first right now. Yeah, yeah. and then you get Zay Jones, who hasn't really proven anything, for a fifth. And there's a lot of talent in the fifth round. We got Kyle Williams in the fifth round of the draft one year. And Matt Milano. And Matt Milano and Kyle Williams. Yes, I believe Harrison I Phillips. There's, plenty, there's plenty of fifth round talent. Not that I cared to look up before the podcast. Yeah, Taron yeah. Johnson's a fifth rounder. Yes, we need him healthy. No need to look it up. Just the point is, Who is the first fifth rounder? we could get some talent with the fifth round pick in two years. So I'm surprised we even got that. The Raiders, um, I believe actually Zay Jones' dad came out and said he's lucky lucky that his son's playing with a real quarterback now. Fuck Zay Jones' dad. Oh, finally, right? You know what? I was going to wait, but this yeah, is never I, a better time than right now yeah, let's fucking to do, do this. the fuck Zay Jones' dad thing. Um, I don't know why his dad is even commenting. Jacob, your jersey, son? Uh, there's a famous WWE thing where Medusa put the WWE title in the Ooh, garbage. His jersey. And it's epic. We are doing that here. We went full heel on Zay Jones. And it's because of his dad. Zay Jones, if you're watching, go to hell. Nah, you know what? I'm go sorry. to hell. I have nothing bad to say about him. I do. God bless you. You wasted all of our times. Wait, backwards. Now, now spit it. Don't really spit on it. We might want to sell that to eBay. We will take that out Monday with the garbage. Oh, so we have to wait a whole week. The whole bye week. That was tough. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Yeah, if you guys can't tell. Mad Men hoodie. Buffalo Sabres supporting the Sabres today. In solidarity of Zay Jones. He yeah, nice full gray. Uh, yeah, nice gray color in solidarity. Of Zay not Jones. having a jersey. We'll all, get him a jersey. All the dog sees is gray. We have, we have jerseys just laying around here. We have Poyer. Hyde's over there. Tremaine Adams is over there. We have Josh Allen hanging up. Rightfully so. I do want to say, on a serious note, Zay, I defended you. Here we go again. Wish, I wish you luck. Here comes the violin music. The Oakland Raiders. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, listen, I hope he does well. I, I have nothing personal against him. I'm not a big, uh, not good enough for my team, not good enough for me. You know, whatever. Good luck, man. 
He'll probably do okay there. I I don't know their offensive situation. I don't know anything about the Raiders. Oh, uh, they have Darren. Waller. I know they have Carr and they have Jacobs and they have Waller that everyone's excited on. And I, Terrell Williams. I don't think their Terrell? offense is anything. I, I don't think Zay Jones. Will they don't do have that. AB. I don't think Zay Jones will do that well there, but I do think he'll get a chance to play. So he'll get another chance to show that he's not very good. <laughs> and, and maybe he just does just enough. And whatever, find your happiness, man. You know where I find my happiness? Black button apple pie moonshine. Jake's about to demonstrate his happiness right now. And we forgot to mention in the first time that this is sponsored by Black Button Distilling. 149 Swan Street. Stop in there this bye week for all of your distilling needs. Try in for a spirit. Try them. They're probably at your local uh, liquor store. I'm not going to lie. Listen, I got to say, this is the best. One of the best We're not even just products saying it. Black Button makes, in my opinion. I mean, you can't hate any other products, but this this is just so smooth. It's got a lot of hints of, like, cinnamon, no, obviously apple. Nothing better than a fall night than moonshine. Apple yeah. pie moonshine. It's so sweet. It goes down so smooth. Oh, man. Here we go. Oh, I, I stare I, at you. I personally love the bourbon cream. Um, you, I had, I was at a winery this past weekend. I know, whatever, white girl, whatever, wasted. Hell yeah. Uh, they had a hot chocolate bourbon cream there. It was hot chocolate but they put bourbon cream in it, and it was fantastic. I couldn't even believe that it was, like, actual oh liquid. Oh, my God. Like, it, it tastes like gold. That's fantastic. But anyways. Black Button, baby. Shout out to Black Button, as always. Stop in this by week. We're going to stop in this by week. We'll be there tomorrow night, actually. Thursday yeah. night. You'll watch it. We'll be there tonight. So Norris Perry's on the roster now. we got the bye week blues. You're, you're upset about it, huh? Listen, there's a fine line when it comes to the number 32 in Buffalo. Um... Obviously, he's not a good person. Didn't McDermott get some flying shit about the number 32? He should. No, I don't think he does. And I think that's just kind of his thing. I don't think he cares about any of that. I think he'd give away 12 if he really cared, honestly. Like, if he could give away the number 12 and 34, he would. Because I don't think that's his, that's, I don't think that's in his, like, vein, is to care more about jerseys than the player. But OJ's a top five, maybe even number one, Buffalo Bill player. Now, obviously, this day would have to come where they never retired the number, but it was just an unspoken thing because of all the bad things that happened. I think it'll be weird to have your I, – listen, I don't want to harp on the whole OJ thing. It's not about him. It's about Sonoris Perry, which who could probably help out the special teams a little bit, I would say, right? Yeah, cause I don't think we're going to be seeing him at the running back position unless – I hope not. That's a dangerous spot. No, but it's strikes. a good security blanket to have. But But he is really good on special teams, which going back to two weeks special ago – Special teams does need a boost. Let up that touchdown. Yeah, and just haven't done anything all year, really. Except Andre Roberts. He's had he's a had good, good returns. returns. Yes. Well, he's only played two games. Yeah, I I think he is a can't knock spot. him. He's been here for no. a cup of coffee. Yeah, really. David, do you have any gripes? I I feel like at the mid season point. Yeah, I, I feel like not mid season quarter season. Always, though. you're very reserved on I, the I, pod. I do, but it's going to lead to an argument. Perfect. The same stuff this I is always, what we're here for. I always say. One one great. You know a good a good. Well, before we start, I, I want to say the defense is amazing. Yes. You know you look at amazing defenses throughout the history. You got Baltimore who had the Ray Lewis defense. Ed Reed. You had the, yeah Ed Reed defense. You had the Brown uh, Broncos who had. Remember when they, Ray the Lewis Von Miller somebody? defense? Then, but you have the Bills that just Double have orders. all of their players. There's not a single player that stands out. Which is awesome to have. That just shows that we're going to have a good defense for the next couple of years. Hopefully down the line it's Tremaine Edmonds' defense, that he's the all-star that sticks out. Right now it's a Jordan Porter MVP defense. MVP type, sure. type player. My gripe. Oh. Yes. Um, Wait, can, I want to guess. Can we guess? Go I, ahead. I want to say we don't run enough. Zach? It's a bigger than it's that. Dave talking. Yeah. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Dave, what's David's gripe? It's probably the fact that the offense doesn't hold the ball well enough and they don't control the clock enough. My biggest gripe is Brian Dable. I, I, I'm not a fan of you. what's been going on so far. I think Josh Allen has been put in dangerous situations. With uh, He does it himself. Well, we're on like third and six or second and ten, and he's running a quarterback draw. Whether Josh Allen slides or not, sure. That's up to That's him. a whole other ball game. That's just something that he's just not at yet. But I think Dable's not putting him in this position. To, listen, Frank Gore, again, with the running, Frank Gore gets positive yards every single time he runs the ball. T.J. Yeldon has not looked bad. He had one fumble. Everyone's just bitching, bitching, bitching about it. Singletary, I get he's injured. 
we we need we do need to run the ball more because we are putting Josh Allen in a position to fail so far. I, we don't have an established offensive line. Zach's talked about Ford and Naseki going back and forth. Just we we you have four preseason games. You had long training camp. Get the offensive line in order. It's just little things like that that we need to get figured out because I think Dable is just all he, he just doesn't have any confidence in the offense yet. Okay. And this is it, the part where we are gonna break that down. And maybe agree with Dave or maybe disprove it. Do you have any gripes with what he said? Um, Listen, this team is number three in red zone efficiency in the whole NFL. You can't take that away from them. And I, I saw some chart. It was like when First, they're free down, to, yeah. how often are they throwing the ball? And I think the Bills were number one or number two. They were number two behind Green Bay, I believe. So we are throwing the ball when we're not required to. And I think that's fantastic. You want to put For the quarterback years. in a spot where he can move the ball. It's, it's always going to be something with this Bills offense. We're not going to be throwing enough. We're not pass, or We're not running enough. I would rather pass this ball in this modern day NFL. I mean, you, you see the exciting teams like the Chiefs, the Patriots. They're all throwing the ball. They're all making big plays. You just don't see that many chunk plays in the running game. I mean, yeah, you see like an 18 yard gain, but you're not going to get those big explosive plays like you do so, passing. So that, that's true, and I know it's a passing league now, but we're not at that point true. yet. We're, we're not at the point where we can throw the ball 40 times a game. We don't have the confidence yet. There's always questions. Just like two weeks ago, you guys were saying, we don't know if Josh Allen's the guy, or people are calling uh, radio stations and say they don't know if Josh Allen's the guy. We're not at that point. We're forcing him into that, though. Good. We're forcing him into that position. Well, it's not always a good thing because we, as fans, don't know if he's the guy either. I want him to be the guy. I'm rooting for him to be the guy. But we have a gold mine right now with Frank Gore, who still is getting positive yards. We still have... McKenzie, who, whenever he gets handed the ball or his little short, we're just not using the assets we have yet. We're not. Um, we have issues at tight end still with hopefully Dawson Knox is the guy. That's been a question mark since season since the season's even started. We just there's little question marks that we don't know the answer to. Is it all Dable's fault? Not at all. But most of it is, and he's the offense coordinator, and it's just time to get it under control. That's my one grab. Am I saying that Dave needs to be fired? Do we need to get pitchforks? Do we need to ask if his witchery in him? No. I'm saying that's the one downfall for this team right now, and it just it needs and it will get figured out, I believe. I think Josh Allen's biggest success is that we are putting him in those situations. We are throwing him in the fire. If you look at every game Josh Allen plays, we look at his fourth quarter comebacks, he starts out slow. But when we put the ball in his hands, he progresses on a game level. Yes, we would like to see that on a weekly level or a season level, but when you get Josh cooking, there is grease. And, and I will say that is true know. because when he got injured during the Patriots game, our confidence boost went completely down. But when he was in the game, we felt like every time he had the ball, we were going to make something happen. We were going to win that game. We just had confidence it was going to happen. As soon as he went down, confidence went down. So I do have confidence in Josh Allen. I'm just saying we could be smarter about the way we use him. Listen, it comes down to this. What do, do I call Josh Allen the best quarterback in the league ever? No. Do I call him one of the top playmakers in the league, though? Yeah. One sure. of them, yes. He, he Listen, the more you can put the ball in when you're – Definitely the offense's best playmaker and one of the best playmakers for his age in the league. He's definitely in that top tier. He could do anything at any given moment. He could run for a big run, which we've seen. He's going up against Florida. He's going up against the Miami Dolphins this week. We're going to see him have big plays this week or going up in next week, I guess. But um, it's about time that we need to come to grips that it's better off to have – the ball into Josh Allen's hands. And we got to understand that. We got to know that. We got to deal with that. Listen, he's got to clean up the turnovers. He's got to clean up the being able to slide. And he's only ever going to be able to do that if he gets game experience. You could teach a guy that in practice. He's just going to say he's going to do it. They don't touch quarterbacks in practice. They don't make him look bad, whatever. He's going to have to do that in a game experience. And listen, if he knocks his head up, if he gets 100 interceptions, that's on him and he's not the guy and we're doing the whole process over in two years. But you're going to need to find out. You're not going to find out babying them when you have a star-studded defense and your number, like, you're in the top 10 in the NFL of overall teams. You have to take advantage of that. It's either you're going to find out that he's the guy 
or you're not gonna you're gonna find out he's not the guy. That's gonna happen now. You're not gonna do that overnight. It's not only a Brian Dable thing. It's a Josh Allen thing, and it's not only a Josh Allen thing. It's a Ken Dorsey thing, and it's not only a Ken Dorsey thing. It's a Sean McDermott thing. It goes all the way through. It's an organizational thing that if this is what they want Josh Allen to be, they're gonna have to deal with the growing pains, and they're gonna have to deal with the fact that it might not be hey be the guy. They're going to have to find out if he is the guy, and you're only gonna find that out from going through those whole process, and you're gonna have to trust the process. We're trusting that process. Insert that meme that we posted on Twitter. Process. So for the most part, you're agreeing with me. Just the the blame needs to be on Allen right now, not David. Yeah, you're focusing. I don't think there's any blame. I've been telling you guys all week. It's just cut and dry at this point. I'm making a guarantee on the podcast. I'm making a guarantee to everyone that listens in front of you guys. It's on the record. This team's going to the playoffs. You guys are going to just have to deal with that fact from here on out. Holy shit. We're going to have to save our money to buy tickets to games in the January. And that's fine. Just ask for them for ask for money for Christmas. It doesn't. Whatever. I don't care. Mom. Listen. I still want clothes, but I will get a playoff ticket. Jim. But this team is going to the playoffs. Jim membership. Their, their schedule is the easiest schedule in the NFL. The stats are out at this point. You're five weeks into it. You've played. Everyone's played. Mostly everyone's played five games. You are going to know. What these teams are from here on out, and they have the easiest schedule, and they have oh, the, one of the best defenses. It's so easy. This offense is only going to take this team as far as it wants to go. And as I told Jake last night, Josh Allen is a guy that I trust. That if the game comes down to it, and it's in a playoff game, and you're in Kansas City or something like that in the second round of the playoffs, and you have the ball in your hands, and there's only a minute and a half left, I trust this guy to make plays to get me down the field. In the first three weeks of the season, he did nothing but do 70-yard drives. And I don't think that a, there's a defense out there. It's not Kansas City's defense. It's not the Colts' defense. It's not the Houston defense. Maybe the Patriots' defense, but they almost beat them if it wasn't for a punt, a botched punt. Listen, this team is going to be able to rival any team they play this year. And that means the Eagles. That means the Cowboys in Dallas on Thanksgiving. And that means Baltimore because now that they've tapered off, everyone kind of figures out, oh, okay, we need to double coverage to the wide receiver and we need to stop the running back. Listen, there's not a team on this schedule that bothers me anymore. Cleveland's yeah. figured out. Let's just call it what it is. Now, I don't know the perfect amount of Baker Mayfield being a one-read quarterback or not. They're they're going to know that. I'm, I'll, I'll do my research when it gets there right now. I'm focusing on Miami in the bye week. But this like, team is like going Baker to the playoffs. Manziel. This this team is going to the playoffs. We we are going to have to live with the fact that it's week five in the NFL, and they have the third best chance in the whole NFL to, from thirty five eight to make the playoffs. That is a statistical fact that they have the third best chance to make the playoffs. Holy oh, <clears throat> holy shit! We are going to have to deal with this. We do it by winning the games that we're supposed to exactly. Be winning. And as we do it in Madman Sports, and as they do it in the locker room at Buffalo Bills, one Bills drive, week by week. You take advantage of everything that's in front of you. You focus on what is there, and you take advantage of it. This week, it's a bye week, so we get to talk about the big picture. On Sunday, we're going to have this whole expose about how we thought the season's going compared to how it actually is going, to what we think the future is going to be for the rest of the season. But I'm telling you right now that this team is a playoff team. Yeah, oh, yeah. Put it in your pocket. Lock it. There is something I want to bring up, Hands though, a socket. that you have been saying since day one of rookie mini camp in 2018. The maturation process of Josh Allen. I haven't said that in a long time. But you've said it so many times. There was a record. You said it 10 straight podcasts. The maturation process of Josh Allen hasn't been a great one. Yes, he's making strides mightily. Me and Zach have had arguments about Josh Allen before. One of our best podcasts last year was a back and forth about Josh Allen. And I'm so glad you're on Team Allen now. I'm not totally sold on him. But oh, listen, we're going to live and die by the fact of whether or not we're sold on him. You're guaranteeing playoffs. From the defense. Listen, I'm not saying he's not good enough to make win games. He's done that in the first four games that they've won. He's been good enough to make the plays. He's also put him at risk at some times. I'm sold on him because I want to be sold on him. So I'm rooting for you every you're step just of the way. A, a homer drinking the Kool-Aid, which I'm too. So no, Black I'm not Kool-Aid. drinking the Kool-Aid. I, I, Facts. I'm not an impatient Bills fan where I'm going to give him 16 or 17 games, however games he's played, and just be done with him just because he's had a couple bad throws. I like that he takes risks. I like that he has confidence every time he's out there, but he has work to do. I'm not willing to 
give him an extended contract yet. I'm also not willing to t- talk about another quarterback for the future. I want him to be the future. He's going to be the future. And I'm buckled in. River mirrors on. I'm ready to go for the ride. Listen, 100%. I, I, since day one. Since th- thanks, thanks to Jake for bringing it up. Since day one of rookie minicamp last year, I, I've said I'm going to be patient on him. I was never going to be sold on him. Listen, you win, an, you win a playoff game, I'm sold on you. Sometimes That's something that other people couldn't do. That's something other people couldn't even get to with this team. Sometimes as true, ridiculous true. as it sounds, Bills fans are the most impatient fans in the world. As ridiculous as it sounds because we went 20 years without making the playoffs, so we're still very impatient. We give up on people way too quick. And yeah, you want to talk about impatience. EJ. These people don't even want to put their tables away after tailgating. They're just like, fuck it, we're going to smash this shit. That's how you know they're, that's how you know they're impatient. They're like, ah, oh, we're not packing this up. Well, uh, lift me up real quick. And that guy almost died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's one thing we don't get into at Mad Men Sports here. We are not promoting that. We don't shit. talk about clowns. We are never promoting that. Oh, we shit. don't talk about never. clowns. Not enough. Yeah, let me yeah. put my glasses back on. Yeah, listen, we we don't promote that stuff at all whatsoever. Listen, if you do you it, get that's in, your uh, own time. who's the biggest Bills fan contest either. That is us. That's us. Well, yeah. Because we well, no, that's you. Heads. Because you're watching us. And kudos to you for watching us because we love you guys. We appreciate you. Are literally we're all the biggest the Bills fans. Yeah, we are the best because we are all in this together, Buffalo Bills fans. All of us, <laughs> love it or not, and it's a battle we fight every day, and we fight it over trick click button. I'm a dude. She's a dude. He's, He's a, a dude. dude. We're, we're all dudes, dudes. Hey. or ladies. Jake, what about she, you? Any she, gripes this season? She's a dude. Do I have any gripes? You, you don't need to have any. Uh, no. I think I'm good. All right, that's the podcast. <laughs> I want them to tone down turnovers, but that's only going to happen from learning. Like I said last week, this is the most important part of the season. Some people like to bitch about an early bye week. I think this bye week comes at a, a perfect time. a perfect time. You get to slow everything down. Listen, you got out of that easy part of the schedule four and one. That's how I predicted it. That's how everyone here predicted it. Now this is where you slow everything down. You fix the offense. You rest up the defense. You take care of the roster. You get these players healed. Listen, there's no mistake that Zay Jones was traded this week and not last week. You have time this week to take care of the roster. You have time to grow along players. You have time to fix things when someone goes missing. You have time for Allen to get used to Duke Williams. Exactly. This is the time. And that was the Duke. bottom line. That was the calling card to Zay Jones there. When Duke Williams came in and stepped up immediately. That's how you knew this guy's replaceable. He's out. Listen, he was on the chopping block after playing only one play. But that's the gist of it. Sonoris Perry in. Duke Williams in. Zay Jones out. Next Connor McDermott up. out. Next man up, baby. Yeah, we have a deep team. I'm honestly not afraid. Dude. Here we go. <laughs> Silence. It's Listen, my phone Silence. is on. Do not, Do not disturb. You're the kind of guy that has a phone ringing during the movie theater, aren't you? No. He tries not to. <laughs> Because I don't go to the movies with anybody else. Yeah, right. <laughs> Damn straight. Shout hey, out to Hannah. Hey. Cheers to a pod well done. Don't kiss, don't kiss that and then put your thing up. We'll see you guys Monday morning. Listen, guys, we'll talk to you next Actually, Monday Thursday or morning. this Monday. Uh, enjoy your bye weekend. That's the biggest thing right here. Bye weekend. No what Bills do, what game. Are you, what are you guys doing for the bye weekend? I'm going apple picking at Becker Farm. Jake's going apple picking. Buy him an apple if you see him. I'm not because I'm single as shit, ladies. He's going oh, to Ellicottville. No. Buy him a beer if you see him. Drinking a lot of Black Button. Please buy me a beer. <laughs> and <What? laughs> I will be watching the Texas Oklahoma game and Hook watch em. and monitoring my eighty fantasy teams. Hook them. Absolutely. How do you do it? Hook them. Hook them. All right, guys. Go Bills. Go Sabers. Go Bills. Thanks for listening. Like and subscribe.